Welcome to chapter 3 of the book of Esther. In the first two chapters, we met King Artaxerxes, who had a queen named Asti, who uh, refused to obey his commands, and the king uh, banished her and then ended up looking for, uh, had his uh, magistrates look for a replacement, found uh, Esther, who was a cousin of a man who was much older than her, uh, Mordecai, and Esther then went into the harem and became uh, the favorite of King Artaxerxes and was queen. And now it changes and goes back to, we find out, uh, Mordecai. Uh, in a way, this book could, instead of being called Esther, it could be called uh, Mordecai, because in a way he uh, is just as important in the context of all the things that are going on as uh, Esther was. And after these things, it begins uh, with Haman's contempt for Mordecai. I will meet Haman here in a little bit. Uh, and it says, after these things, King Artaxerxes extolled Amman, the son of Amadathu, Ugeon, uh, Hamadatha, the Agagite, and King James put those words in there. I don't know who he is, but uh, some probably a, somebody from per Persia, the empire. Uh, and he was in, became, was in the palace area. And it says, and he exalted him and seated him first of all his friends. So he became uh, one of the, or the top person that the king would listen to, an advisor. And all the ones in the courtyard did obeisance to him, to Mordecai, uh, to Haman. So he was that important. For so the king assigned it to do. But Mordecai uh, did not do obeisance to him. Now, uh, it mentions uh, that um, in the Bible to, and to not uh, basically fall, fall down to the idols or to the gods of the nations. And so this is what Mordecai is refusing uh, to do or to bow down to anyone, I suppose. Uh, it's, it's strange because uh, you would think that he would just go along with uh, everybody else in doing the things uh, that the uh, people would uh, expect uh, anyone to do. If everybody else has been chosen by uh, the king to do obeisance, and then you think you expect somebody to do it, but somebody refuses to go along with the status quo, then they can cause a problem. Now, it mentions in Deuteronomy 28, 37, it says, uh, and you will be there, and these in, in among the nations scattered, for an enigma and a parable and a tale in all the nations into whichever the, the Lord should take you there. So, the Jew was different than anybody else. Um, and we'll, we'll see here how, in a way, he was different. And uh, the ones in the courtyard of the king said to Mordecai, the Jew, Oh, Mordecai, why do you disregard the things being said by the king? Accordingly, each day they spoke to him, and he hearkened not to them. Uh, and they indicated to Haman that Mordecai was rebelling against the words of the king. And Mordecai indicated to them that he is a Jew. So uh, what makes the Jew different? Well, it's interesting in that uh, here we, we see that Haman plots to destroy the Jews as we go down here. And uh, the Jews, uh, for some reason have, wherever they have uh, gone, have been despised, hated. And a lot of this is laid out in the curse uh, that is in uh, Deuteronomy, the whole chapter of 28, the, of what's going to happen if they um, don't obey God's laws and so forth. And so 
the attitude that people cop when they uh, ha- see Jews ranges from all sorts of uh, emotions. My father was very anti-Semitic. He, uh, I can't say he hated Jews, but he certainly didn't like he didn't like them because they. He said they always stuck together. Well, <laughs> so do the Italians. So do the Germans. So do all kinds of people. And so you know, why would anybody, if you didn't like somebody, if he was an Italian, say, "Oh, I'm going to hate all the Italians and get rid of all the Italians in the world." Well. You know, there's all kinds of people that are disliked by other people for different reasons, but nobody's running around trying to get rid of everybody. But yet with the poor Jew, I shouldn't say poor, but unfortunate Jew, uh, they wherever they go, uh, they were cursed and they were hated and they wanted people wanted to get rid of them. Uh, uh, in history, you'll see quite a few places that this happened. It happened in uh, Spain with uh, the what they call the Moros. And then it happened uh, in Nazi Germany, of course. It happened in the pogroms in uh, Russia. And then uh, all sorts of places and all the Muslim nations of people that hate the Jews. Uh, The Muslims hated the Jews. It's almost a hatred that's built into the Koran. I receive letters and uh, get comments on my video seminar, and I have people writing me, and I uh, am a lot of times castigated because of my of what people see as uh, more or less a st- sticking up for the Jews, going along with the Jews, because I read the Old Testament, go through the Old Testament, and they think that that's uh, some people, why why would you um, read something about all these people who crucified Christ and they have all kinds of uh, reasons uh, for not wanting to read the Old Testament? And then uh, they, uh, I get letters from people that are uh, white supremacists, uh, Nazis, basically, and they don't like the Jews for whatever reason, uh, which is be a psychological um study that would be very interesting to find out what it is, and I believe it goes back to God's curse. Personally, if uh, somebody's rebelling like they were, then they would be uh, brought out as a curse. And uh, I never uh, hated the Jews and never disliked them. I had uh, two or three Jewish friends, and so these people, if if I say that, it's like, you know, what are you, why are you saying that? They crucified Christ and all that. Um, but I look at what Jesus says, and he says, uh, Who are you, O man? And I'm paraphrasing, I didn't write the exact place down, but who are you, O man, to judge another man's servant? So to me, the Jews are a people that God has chosen who have a, a lot, in a, a lot of ways, have rebelled. And I bring it out when I bring out what God his reaction to their rebelling and all these things, especially uh, in the last three chap, uh, three books that I have went through, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And you'll see this uh, as they went into idolatry. And God had a reason for wanting the destruction uh, of these people and sending them out throughout the, the world. But me, I don't, I, who am I to judge? It's, this is God's dealings with these people, and he will deal with them. So to me, when I meet a Jewish person, I don't care if he's uh, Hasidic, uh, or if he's um, liberal, if he's uh, whatever, um, I, it's interesting to meet a person. To me, it's a Jew, because I know the Bible, and I know the curses, and I know the blessings. And so I would hope that the Jews I meet has the blessings, but this isn't always the case. I had uh, two or three uh, Jewish, two pe- Jewish people I worked for who were horrible to me, uh, treated me worse than anybody. And then I, but I have three close, really close friends that I had that were, one was an Israeli and um, the other one was, uh, I mentioned before, Harley Gaber, who was a minimalist composer and knew him real well. Uh, I was with him fairly close before he 
uh, died, and then I have another friend, Rich, who is half Jewish, who's actually going to be coming uh, this coming week and s- spending seven days with me. He's 82 years old, and we go through the things of the Bible and um, and the Jews and back and forth. And he he's not used to the Greek Old Testament, and I'll bring up and show him things, and he's like, well, you know, it's not something he's learned. He reads the uh, King James, and but uh, it's interesting, and sometimes he accuses me of wanting to argue, but I don't really want to argue. I just bring out things that I see, and if it causes uh, his uh, dis- uh, disconcerting uh, feeling towards it, well, I'm, that's not my fault. It's just the way it is because a lot of things in the, in the Greek Old Testament are different than what you would read uh, in the King James uh, Bible. But to go back and to uh, read the Old Testament as we're doing right now, we're going through the book of Esther, um, is um, actually bringing us out to understanding uh, the mind of God. We see how God has inter, um, has dealt with man throughout history in different ways. And without reading the Old Testament, if all you did was read the New Testament, you would miss the mind of God. Without studying the Old Testament, uh, you would be deprived from knowing what God requires of people. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus, of course, brought his requirements, and a lot of it was against what the Jews were doing at that time. But then again, you can see what God wanted of the people and of the Jews. And uh, we're not, if you're not a Jew, then uh, you're free from the law. And if you're free from the law, if you want to believe in Jesus Christ also. But um, you, by reading the Old Testament, uh, we see this. Um, But we also see that the disobedience of the Jew uh, is addressed by God. God doesn't like what they were doing, or if he did, he'd bless them, or or he'd have a curse. Then as they uh, went along, it seems like they just kept going uh, going it from away from God more and more, and then God uh, sent His prophets, starting with Moses and their rebellion in the wilderness, down through all the kings until the kings uh, became corrupt, and then the prophets uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, all of those uh, prophets, and then. Uh, the disobedience of the Jew after Christ is mentioned uh, by Paul. We see that uh, in the New Testament because Paul would always go to talk to the Jews first in the different cities that he went to, and they rejected him a lot of times. Sometimes they wanted to hear more and so forth. And, of course, the disobedience of the Jews is addressed by Jesus and the um, what and what is going to happen to Israel because of that. And so uh, the Bible in going as a whole, it's God's word. And if you sit there and you try to say, well, you know, the Old Testament is something else. It's not, has nothing to do with us because we're in the New Testament. I uh, personally think that's a very dangerous position to take. And I, and I certainly don't take it. I go through the word of God. Uh, and I'm glad that God has put this all out. I'm sorry that these people uh, have rebelled against him, but uh, I rebelled against God for 13 years, walked away, and so uh, God's grace is there, and anybody can come to him uh, with forgiveness and a change of heart. Now, uh, to continue, though, with um, this attitude, uh, it says of the uh, of this man, that we, Haman, it says, and he took counsel to remove all the Jews under uh, the kingdom of Artaxerxes. Well, I mean, that's amazing to want to get rid of all the Jews. I mean, if you, like I said, if it was an Italian or a uh, Slovakian, and they, were, and they didn't do something, are you going to, you want to get all this, get rid of all the Slovakians in the world? And at this time, the Artaxerxes pretty well ran, um, uh, ruled the world from uh, the Indies, uh, uh, India all the way to uh, Ethiopia and Africa. So anyway, he, Haman, made a referendum in the 12th year of the kingdom. Psephisma, uh, Psephisma is a referendum, and that's 
uh, in the end of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, where the beast, uh, they use the sifizo is, is to vote. And this is the sifizma, is a referendum. And they um, counted uh, the sifos, uh, the little pebbles, and for a referendum. And as I mentioned that in the book of Revelation, it wasn't just a numerical counting for counting sake of the number 666, but it, was, it has something to do with a referendum, a vote. So he made this referendum uh, in the 12th month of the kingdom and cast lots day by day and month by month so as to destroy in one day the race of Mordecai, probably casting a lot who's going to do this and who's going to do this where and who's going to do this when uh, as far as he's uh, destroying and killing the Jews. And the lot fell on the 14th of the month, which is Adar. Now, I'm not exactly sure because there's other lots. So, it, I mean, maybe this is the one that had to do with Seuss of the capital. I'm not sure on that. And he spoke to King Artaxerxes, saying, well, There exists a nation having been disseminated among the nations in all your kingdom, but their laws are special from all the nations and of the laws of the king they disregard. And it's not advantageous uh, to the king to allow them. If it seems good to the king, well, let him decree uh, to destroy them. Dogmatisato is a verb to decree, a dogma, to make a dogma, give a dogma. And I will uh, circumscribe for the treasury of the king 10,000 silver talents for uh, this, to put, to put out uh, this money for the uh, paying the army, whoever is going to kill all these Jews. It's amazing that uh, that would happen. Now, uh, my Israeli friend who I imagine earlier, I hope you haven't seen in years, but his family lived in Baghdad for thousands of years, all these Jews in Baghdad, until Saddam Hussein um, made them all leave and uh, persecuted them. But now they're persecuting Christians also. So uh, this is, has gone on for people. Certain peoples are, uh, are picked out over others. The Armenians by the Muslim Turks uh, were, uh, were um, persecuted and sent out of uh, the area of Armenia where they were at. And I'm sure there's other ones I'm trying to, I'm not quite sure, but well, then the, the Native Americans in the United States, North America, Spanish came in and uh, put the sp South American natives uh, under his uh, their rule, uh, and the English went into Africa. All, all these things, Japan went in and ch into China and Korea. And so here, uh, the so this king uh, removes his ring. The king removing the ring, the dactylion, the dactyl, uh, is, is uh, feeling something with your fingers. He gave it into the hand, hands uh, to Haman, Ammon, to set a seal according to the things being written against the Jews. And the king said to Ammon, well, as for the silver, you have it, and, the, and to the nation, oh, you treat it as you want. Doesn't sound like he was too interested. Just let Haman do it. And the scribes were called grammatis, grammar comes from that, by the king in the first month, the 13th day. And they wrote, as Haman gave orders to the strategies, the strategy, the commandants, and to the rulers in every place from Indikis unto Ethiopias, India to Ethiopia. Wow. Tremendous stretch of, of uh, territory that the Persians controlled. To 127 places, to the rulers of the nations, according to their lexine, a lexicon has to do with that, this form of speech. So all these pl people are now going to uh, come after uh, the Jew. Um, and it was th uh, through Artaxerxes the king. Uh, and it was sent by couriers, that is, that uh, epistle. Does it say an epistle? It says it's someplace. I guess it's down lower here. Uh, into the kingdom of Artaxerxes, 
to remove the race, the genos, we have a genus of, of the classification of animals, a genus, a race of the Jews, on day one of the dodecatu, minos, duo, do, shortened for two, and decat, deca is ten, so ten and two is twelve, which is adar, and to plunder their possessions. It reminds us of what happened to all the Jews in Nazi Germany who were uh, plundered of all their possessions. Their stores were closed on the Kristallnacht. Uh, they were beaten, and um, then they were sent into concentration camps, and their possessions were uh, taken by the Germans. In the copies of the Epistolon, here's an epistle, that is a letter being read aloud to people. It's not the same as a, a letter that was just to one person. The copies of the Epistolon were displayed in each place, and it was assigned to all to be prepared for that day. And the thing was hastened, even in Susan, in the city of the king was in, uh, where and Haman and uh, Artex and um, Esther and Mordecai. And the king and Haman toasted, oh, all right, and they were happy about it, but the city was disturbed because they knew a certain day that they were supposed to kill these people and take all their possessions. And uh, God, I'm sure, put a spirit of disturbance upon many people. And I'm not sure what happened in Nazi Germany, how many people were disturbed uh, over what was going on by the Nazis and the way they treated the Jews, but it would be interesting to find that out. But uh, I don't know. I haven't read too much about that. I do read or watch videos on YouTube of things about the uh, Nazis in Germany. I'm interested in part because of my half-brother who was killed uh, in the Battle of the Bulge, as I mentioned, uh, which is right at the end of the Second World War as far as European campaign, uh, right at the Hopefully he got across the Rhine River into Germany and he was killed. But uh, so uh, they were disturbed. Chapter four continues. Esther finds out what's going on with her against her people. But Mordecai, I believe, is again uh, the main subject. And uh, but it's called Esther. Hope you'll join us in chapter four and continue with this fascinating story and uh, be good to the Jews and be, be careful and don't uh, be judging another man's servant, God's servant. They may not be uh, the epitome of what we would like, but are we? And a lot of times we become judgmental when we're doing the same things and the bad things, and that's a dangerous place to be when you are doing something that is wrong, breaking, but somebody else that is doing it, you condemn. So uh, just be careful and uh, have an open mind and more so an open heart. God bless.